This is the SBP trial examination listening test. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any question now because you must not speak during the test. Now, open your question paper and look at part 1. You will hear people talking in seven different situations. For questions 1 to 7, choose the correct answer, A, B or C. You will hear each recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to look at part 1. Now, we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Question 1. You will hear Hafiz talking about what he saw outside of his house. It was 11.30 a.m. and I was already feeling the heat despite being in my air-conditioned room. I looked outside and saw two men cutting grass in front of my house. Standing several meters from them, were two more workers sweeping the freshly cut grass into a pile while shielding their eyes from the blinding sunlight with their gloved hands. Those poor men! I decided to give them bottles of cold soda and thank them for their service. Now, listen again. It was 11.30 a.m. and I was already feeling the heat despite being in my air-conditioned room. I looked outside and saw two men cutting grass in front of my house. Standing several meters from them, or two more workers sweeping the freshly cut grass into a pile while shielding their eyes from the blinding sunlight with their gloved hands. Those poor men! I decided to give them bottles of cold soda and thank them for their service. Question 2. You will hear some tips on how to remedy hiccups. If you have hiccups, try breathing into a paper bag. You can also pull your knees up to your chest and lean forward. Besides these, you can bite on a lemon or taste vinegar. You can also hold your breath for a short time. But remember, do not drink fizzy or hot drinks and keep away from spicy meals. Now, listen again. If you have hiccups, try breathing into a paper bag. You can also pull your knees up to your chest and lean forward. Besides these, you can bite on a lemon or taste vinegar. You can also hold your breath for a short time. But remember, do not drink fizzy or hot drinks and keep away from spicy meals. Question 3. You will hear a person booking a flight through a telephone call. Northwind Airways, good morning. May I help you? Yes. Do you have any flights to Sydney next Tuesday afternoon? One moment, please. Yes, there's a flight at 1645 and one at 1800. That's fine. Could you tell me how much a return flight costs? I'll be staying three weeks. Economy, business class or first class ticket? Economy, please. That would be €346. Euro. OK, could I make a reservation? Certainly. Which flight would you like? The 1645, please. Could I have your name, please? My name is Mary Jones. That's M-A-R-Y-J-O-N-E-S. How would you like to pay, Ms. Jones? Can I pay at the check-in desk when I pick up my ticket? Yes, but you will have to confirm this reservation at least two hours before departure time. I see. Now you have been booked, Ms. Jones. The flight leaves at 16.45 and your arrival in Sydney will be at 9.25am local time.
The flight number is NWA476. Thank you. Now, listen again. Northwind Airways, good morning. May I help you? Yes. Do you have any flights to Sydney next Tuesday afternoon? One moment, please. Yes, there's a flight at 16.45 and one at 18.00. That's fine. Could you tell me how much a return flight costs? I'll be staying three weeks. Economy, business class or first class ticket? Economy, please. That would be €346. Euro. OK, could I make a reservation? Certainly. Which flight would you like? The 16.45, please. Could I have your name, please? My name is Mary Jones. That's M-A-R-Y-J-O-N-E-S. How would you like to pay, Ms Jones? Can I pay at the check-in desk when I pick up my ticket? Yes, but you will have to confirm this reservation at least two hours before departure time. I see. Now you have been booked, Ms Jones. The flight leaves at 16.45 and your arrival in Sydney will be at 9.25am local time. The flight number is NWA476. Thank you. Question 4. You will hear a person talking about 3D printers. The most common materials that are used in 3D printers are plastic, metal, and glass. However, there are many other materials that can be used as well, including concrete and even human tissue. Materials such as wood, cloth, paper, and rocks cannot be 3D printed because they would burn before they can be melted and pushed through a nozzle. Now, listen again. The most common materials that are used in 3D printers are plastic, metal, and glass. However, there are many other materials that can be used as well, including concrete and even human tissue. Materials such as wood, cloth, paper, and rocks cannot be 3D printed because they would burn before they can be melted and pushed through a nozzle. Question 5. You will hear an explanation on plant-based diets. Including small amounts of animal products, such as meat and fish, while focusing mainly on vegetarian foods, is referred to as a semi-vegetarian diet. Plans that reject meat, but still include fish, are referred to as pescatarian diets. People who don't eat meat or fish, but still include dairy and eggs, are referred to as vegetarian, while those who cut out any animal-based products, including dairy, eggs and honey are referred to as vegan. Now, listen again. Including small amounts of animal products, such as meat and fish, while focusing mainly on vegetarian foods, is referred to as a semi-vegetarian diet. Plans that reject meat, but still include fish, are referred to as pescatarian diets. People who don't eat meat or fish, but still include dairy and eggs, are referred to as vegetarian, while those who cut out any animal-based products, including dairy, eggs and honey are referred to as vegan. Question 6. You will hear a person talking about fast fashion. How can clothes be so environmentally damaging? When you combine the fashion industry's carbon dioxide emissions and the large mass of clothes disposed around the world, then it becomes clear. In fact, fashion production, specifically fast fashion, makes up 10% of humanity's carbon emissions. Fast fashion refers to clothing made from cheap materials that usually do not last long. On top of this, the clothing is usually manufactured in Asian countries, where most factories run on coal and gas. Now, listen again. How can clothes be so environmentally damaging? When you combine the fashion industry's carbon dioxide emissions and the large mass of clothes disposed around the world, then it becomes clear. In fact, fashion production, specifically fast fashion, makes up 10% of humanity's carbon emissions. Fast fashion refers to clothing made from cheap materials that usually do not last long. 
On top of this, the clothing is usually manufactured in Asian countries, where most factories run on coal and gas. Question 7. You will hear a person talking about temperature differences in Malaysia. Temperatures in Malaysia vary between 25 and 35 degrees during the year. It is usually very hot and humid, especially in major cities. Often due to haze, warm air is trapped inside the cities, which results in very warm temperatures. It is usually less hot on the many islands surrounding Malaysia, mainly due to the cool breezes. It is also less hot in the highlands of Malaysia. Here you can enjoy cooler temperatures that never exceed 25 degrees. Now, listen again. Temperatures in Malaysia vary between 25 and 35 degrees during the year. It is usually very hot and humid, especially in major cities. Often due to haze, warm air is trapped inside the cities, which results in very warm temperatures. It is usually less hot on the many islands surrounding Malaysia, mainly due to the cool breezes. It is also less hot in the highlands of Malaysia. Here you can enjoy cooler temperatures that never exceed 25 degrees. That is the end of part 1. Now, turn to part 2. You will hear a person talking about some amazing facts about elephants. For questions 8 to 15, circle the correct answer, A, B, or C. You will hear the recording twice. Answer all the questions. You now have one minute to look at the questions. According to the WWF, there are approximately 415,000 African elephants and 40,000 to 50,000 Asian elephants left. African elephants are the biggest of the bunch, weighing it at up to 6 tons while Asian elephants are slightly lighter. African elephants have rounded heads and big ears while Asian elephants have two humps on their heads and much smaller, rounded ears. As the largest land mammal, elephants use their size and strength to shape the environment, so it fulfills their needs and other animals as well. Elephants will use their tusks, their feet, and their trunks to dig holes that will fill with water from rainfall or from groundwater. These water holes become water sources for not only elephants but other animals that share the habitat. Elephants also use their massive brain power to figure out how to best achieve their nutritional requirements, even discovering how to mine for salt. In general, they need salts for muscle and nerve functions and blood pressure regulation. Nevertheless, it is mainly to keep them hydrated. According to National Geographic, they spend more than half of their day eating and can consume over 300 pounds of food a day. As herbivores, they eat all kinds of high water content plants, grass, leaves, woody shrubs, flowers, and fruits. Besides disrupting traffic and destroying people's properties, elephants tend to eat crops grown by humans which largely contributes to elephants humans conflicts and mud to protect their skin from the sun and from biting insects 
Interestingly, the deep wrinkles in elephant skin, which hold the water and mud, are usually used to help keep them cool and free from sun damage. Elephants also share many traits with humans and show extraordinary compassion and empathy towards each other. They have deep relationships with their family members. They celebrate the birth of babies, take care of their young like we do, and nurture them into their teens. They also mourn their dead, returning to grief where family or friends died. However, Elephants have the ability to identify themselves in mirrors much earlier than humans, which typically happens at 18 months old. Lastly, elephants can communicate over long distances. For example, if they encounter danger, they will send low-frequency alarm calls to signal other elephants in the area. Elephants don't just hear footsteps from far away. They can actually feel them through their feet. Now, listen again. According to the WWF, there are approximately 415,000 African elephants and 40,000 to 50,000 Asian elephants left. African elephants are the biggest of the bunch, weighing it at up to 6 tons while Asian elephants are slightly lighter. African elephants have rounded heads and big ears while Asian elephants have two humps on their heads and much smaller, rounded ears. As the largest land mammal, elephants use their size and strength to shape the environment, so it fulfills their needs and other animals as well. Elephants will use their tusks, their feet, and their trunks to dig holes that will fill with water from rainfall or from groundwater. These water holes become water sources for not only elephants but other animals that share the habitat. Elephants also use their massive brain power to figure out how to best achieve their nutritional requirements, even discovering how to mine for salt. In general, they need salts for muscle and nerve functions and blood pressure regulation. Nevertheless, it is mainly to keep them hydrated. Elephants' huge size, which is around 6 tons, requires a huge amount of food. According to National Geographic, they spend more than half of their day eating and can consume over 300 pounds of food a day. As herbivores, they eat all kinds of high water content plants, grass, leaves, woody shrubs, flowers, and fruits. Besides disrupting traffic and destroying people's properties, Elephants tend to eat crops grown by humans, which largely contributes to elephants-humans conflicts. They can also create their own sunscreen. Yes, animals can get sunburned, but elephants have found a skillful way to protect themselves. Elephants will cover themselves with dust, dirt, and mud to protect their skin from the sun and from biting insects. Interestingly, the deep wrinkles in elephant skin, which hold the water and mud, are usually used to help keep them cool and free from sun damage. Elephants also share many traits with humans and show extraordinary compassion and empathy towards each other. They have deep relationships with their family members. They celebrate the birth of babies, take care of their young like we do, and nurture them into their teens. They also mourn their dead, returning to grief where family or friends died. However, elephants have the ability to identify themselves in mirrors much earlier than humans, which typically happens at 18 months old. Lastly, elephants can communicate over long distances. For example, if they encounter danger, they will send low-frequency alarm calls to signal other elephants in the area. Elephants don't just hear footsteps from far away. They can actually feel them through their feet. That is the end of part two. Now, turn to part three. You will hear five short extracts in which people are talking about tips to stay safe on social media. For questions 16 to 20, choose from the list A to G what each speaker says.
Use the letters only once. There are two extra letters which you do not need to use. You will hear the recording twice. Answer all the questions. You now have 30 seconds to look at the questions. Now, we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Speaker 1 For me, staying safe on the internet starts with creating a strong password. It acts as an important defense against possible online dangers. I always make sure my password includes both capital and small letters, numbers, and symbols to make it more complex. Plus, I don't use my name and date of birth, so nobody can easily guess my password. This prevents people from assessing my account without my permission, especially scammers. Speaker 2 It is crucial to think twice before we decide to post content online. Do not post or share messages, pictures, or videos that you wouldn't want the world to see. You cannot control how information is shared by those who see it, even if you post it privately or later delete it. Remember that we can never permanently erase something that has been published on the internet. It is important to protect your online interaction and reputation. Speaker 3 We also need to be aware of our privacy settings. Make sure you monitor who can see what you post. Usually, I only allow my family and friends to follow my online updates and sharing. Besides, we should always disable location services. Although, it can be fun to let our friends know where we are, this also allows people with bad intentions to know how to reach us. This also prevents us from getting harassed online. Speaker 4 my parents always remind me to finish my homework first before checking my phone. It is easy to get addicted to social media and spend much more time than we intended to on it. We should also take part in offline activities such as hobbies, sports and other interests that don't involve screens. I love to go outside and meet other people in order to have a better mental well-being. Speaker 5 if we are facing cyberbullying, do not hesitate to ask for assistance. Tell an adult we trust, such as our parents, teachers, or our school counselors. It's important not to erase any messages. Instead, save screenshots and emails as evidence to share with an adult. If required, block the account and keep copies of all interactions. By taking these steps, we can effectively prevent cyberbullying and create a safer online environment. Now, listen again. Speaker 1 For me, staying safe on the internet starts with creating a strong password. It acts as an important defense against possible online dangers. I always make sure my password includes both capital and small letters, numbers, and symbols to make it more complex. Plus, I don't use my name and date of birth, so nobody can easily guess my password. This prevents people from assessing my account without my permission, especially scammers. Speaker 2 It is crucial to think twice before we decide to post content online. Do not post or share messages, pictures, or videos that you wouldn't want the world to see. You cannot control how information is shared by those who see it, even if you post it privately or later delete it. 
Remember that we can never permanently erase something that has been published on the internet. It is important to protect your online interaction and reputation. Speaker three. We also need to be aware of our privacy settings. Make sure you monitor who can see what you post. Usually, I only allow my family and friends to follow my online updates and sharing. Besides, we should always disable location services. Although it can be fun to let our friends know where we are, this also allows people with bad intentions to know how to reach us. This also prevents us from getting harassed online. Speaker four. My parents always remind me to finish my homework first before checking my phone. It is easy to get addicted to social media and spend much more time than we intended to on it. We should also take part in offline activities such as hobbies, sports, and other interests that don't involve screens. I love to go outside and meet other people in order to have a better mental well-being. Speaker five. If we are facing cyberbullying, do not hesitate to ask for assistance. Tell an adult we trust, such as our parents, teachers, or our school counselors. It's important not to erase any messages. Instead, save screenshots and emails as evidence to share with an adult. If required, block the account and keep copies of all interactions. By taking these steps. We can effectively prevent cyberbullying and create a safer online environment. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. You will hear an actor talking about his profession. For questions twenty-one to thirty, fill in the missing information in each numbered space. Use no more than one word for each space. You now have one minute. To look at part four, you will hear the interview twice. Answer all the questions. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully, Mr. Harris. Thank you so much for taking some time off your busy schedule for this interview. My first question for you is, what is it like to work on a movie? You're welcome. Well, working on a movie shoot can be an exciting and rewarding experience. The process of bringing a script to life on the big screen is a joint effort that involves many different people, with various skills and talents such as the director, producer, supporting actors, and many more. During pre-production, the crew will work on planning, scouting a location, and casting actors. Once the cameras start rolling, work on the visual style of the film also begins, while the sound and lighting teams will work to create the right atmosphere. During post-production, the film will be edited and sound and visual effects will be added. This can be a long and tiring process, but the finished product is usually well worth the effort. I see. How long do actors like you work each day? Generally, actors work ten to twenty hours a day, six days a week, when they are starring in a main role. Supporting actors can expect to work around thirty hours a week. It largely depends on the role. Filming schedule and film studio. Overall, work hours for an actor can be extensive and irregular. I see. 
Do you always get along with the cast and crew on the set? Well, acting is a collaborative art form, and it is not uncommon for actors to work with difficult cast and crew members. However, there are ways to maintain professionalism and maintain a positive working relationship despite these challenges. Um, one way actors can deal with difficult cast and crew members is by setting clear boundaries and communicating their expectations. This can include having conversations about appropriate behavior on set, or addressing any other specific issues. Mr. Harris, I'm quite curious about this. Do actors actually watch their own movies? It actually varies depending on the actor and where they are in their career. New and young actors usually watch themselves performing different takes when submitting recorded auditions to ensure they choose the best one. They may be asked by acting instructors to watch their own performance to develop, improve, and expand their skills. And when an actor completes their first film, they will usually watch it due to the excitement of playing a role for the first time. Some actors who have been in the industry for longer may prefer not to watch their movies. They might enjoy performing, but are not interested in watching the film itself, or they might avoid watching their movies to prevent being self-critical. And negatively affecting their future performances. My next question is: What do film actors usually do when they are not acting or promoting their films? Film actors usually do a variety of things when they are not acting or promoting their films. Some actors may choose to take a break and relax, while others may explore other interests or hobbies. Some may continue to work on other projects such as writing, directing, or producing. Some may also choose to take classes or workshops to continue to develop their craft. Additionally, many actors are also involved in charity and may spend time volunteering or sporting organizations that share the same interests and values that they uphold. Before ending this interview, is there any advice you would like to share with the new and young actors out there? Acting requires practice, reassessment, and adjustments. Taking group classes or studying with a personal acting coach can be an excellent way to sharpen your craft between jobs and auditions. Also, practice on camera. Use your phone to record your next rehearsal. Then review your on-camera acting work to better understand how your face and body language project on screen. Thank you very much, Mr. Harris, for answering all the questions. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now listen again, Mr. Harris. Thank you so much for taking some time off your busy schedule for this interview. My first question for you is, what is it like to work on a movie? You're welcome. Well, working on a movie shoot can be an exciting and rewarding experience. The process of bringing a script to life on the big screen is a joint effort that involves many different people with various skills and talents, such as. The director, producer, supporting actors, and many more. During pre-production, the crew will work on planning, scouting a location, and casting actors. Once the cameras start rolling, work on the visual style of the film also begins. While the sound and lighting teams will work to create the right atmosphere. During post-production, the film will be edited and sound and visual effects will be added. This can be a long and tiring process, but the finished product is usually well worth the effort. I see. How long do actors like you work each day? Generally, actors work ten to twenty hours a day, six days a week, when they are starring in a main role. Supporting actors can expect to work around thirty hours a week. It largely depends on the role, filming schedule, and film studio. Overall, work hours for an actor can be extensive and irregular. I see. Do you always get along with the cast and crew on the set? Well, acting is a collaborative art form, and it is not uncommon for actors to work with difficult cast and crew members. However, there are ways to maintain professionalism and maintain a positive working relationship despite these challenges. Um. One way actors can deal with difficult cast and crew members is by setting clear boundaries and communicating their expectations. This can include having conversations about appropriate behavior on set, 
or addressing any other specific issues. Mr. Harris, I'm quite curious about this. Do actors actually watch their own movies? It actually varies depending on the actor and where they are in their career. New and young actors usually watch themselves performing different takes when submitting recorded auditions to ensure they choose the best one. They may be asked by acting instructors to watch their own performance to develop, improve and expand their skills and when an actor completes their first film, they will usually watch it due to the excitement of playing a role for the first time. Some actors who have been in the industry for longer may prefer not to watch their movies. They might enjoy performing but are not interested in watching the film itself or they might avoid watching their movies to prevent being self-critical and negatively affecting their future performances. My next question is, what do film actors usually do when they are not acting or promoting their films? Film actors usually do a variety of things when they are not acting or promoting their films. Some actors may choose to take a break and relax, while others may explore other interests or hobbies. Some may continue to work on other projects such as writing, directing or producing. Some may also choose to take classes or workshops to continue to develop their craft. Additionally, many actors are also involved in charity and may spend time volunteering or sporting organizations that share the same interests and values that they uphold. Before ending this interview, is there any advice you would like to share with the new and young actors out there? Acting requires practice, reassessment and adjustments. Taking group classes or studying with a personal acting coach can be an excellent way to sharpen your craft between jobs and auditions. Also, practice on camera. Use your phone to record your next rehearsal. Then review your on-camera acting work to better understand how your face and body language project on screen. Thank you very much, Mr. Harris, for answering all the questions. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check your answers and copy your answers onto your answer sheet.